Let's take a look at one of the more famous paradoxes people bring up about special relativity. Uh, they're trying to find flaws in Einstein's theory when, when they do this, and it turns out the paradoxes get resolved, and it only strengthens Einstein's ideas. So in this one, they said, well, what if we have a runner holding a 20-meter-long pole, and he can run really fast, and we have a 10-meter-long barn? Can we fit the pole in the barn? And if you knew nothing about special relativity, you might say, no, that's impossible. But we know that if the runner runs, the pole contracts relative to us, or the barn frame of reference, and it might fit inside the barn, depending on how fast he runs. So what happens if he runs toward the barn at 87% the speed of light? Well, in the barn's frame of reference, our frame of reference, the pole contracts in the direction of motion. How much? Well, it's given by this equation. L0 is the length we would measure if the pole was at rest to us, or it's the length the runner measures. So that is 20 meters, and V is our velocity, and C is the velocity of light. So if we put in 20 for L0 and 0.87C, the C's cancel, and we get 20 times 0.5. That's why we use 87% C, is this square root factor comes out to 0.5, which is nice and neat. And so we get 10 meters, and so the pole does fit in the barn. To test it out, we can have the doors closed instantly uh, for an instance, and the pole is fitting in the barn. So where's the paradox? Nothing really wrong here. This is exactly what Einstein would say. So I'll let you think about it. You could pause this and think, can you come up with a problem that might not be able to be explained here? Okay, we're back, and so if you thought about, hey, wait a minute, what if we look in the runner's frame of reference? What's going to happen then? In that case, the barn contracts. So the runner sees the barn moving toward him at 87% the speed of light, and it would contract. And so L0 is 10, the length of the barn when it's at rest, and now the barn is approaching the runner at 87% the speed of light, and so this comes out to 0.5 again, so now it's 5 meters. The pole doesn't fit in the barn. Still not really a paradox, but we're close. And so can you think of something that can't be resolved? In other words, a problem where we'd have a different outcome in each frame of reference. And if you look here, what about the doors being closed? Notice both, both doors closed here. What if we close both doors in this frame of reference. Now we'd see the pole sticking out of a door that's closed, which never happens here. And so that would be the paradox. The doors would hit the pole, and so that's what we need to resolve. Uh, how can we resolve this? Well, we have a computer program that runs this using the equations of special relativity. So let's look at the Barnes frame of reference, our frame of reference, close the doors for an instant, and so the pole has contracted in our frame of reference and fits inside the barn, and we close the doors for an instant, and the pole is entirely within the barn during that instant with the doors closed. So let's look with the runner's frame of reference. What do you notice is different? Well, you might notice, well, the barn is moving. Well, that's from the runner's point of view. The barn is approaching him at 87% the speed of light. But what else do you see? And so hopefully you observe something very different in this frame of reference other than the barn contracting and moving toward the runner, and that is that the doors do not close at the same time. And so this is called the relativity of simultaneity. Two events that occur at the same time in one frame of reference, both doors closing in the barn frame of reference, don't happen at the same time in another frame of reference that's moving relative to that other one. And so in this case, that resolves the paradox. But let's see if we can explore a little bit more. Why does the right door close first? Well, if we go back to our frame of reference, the barn frame of reference, 
There is a runner in the barn. The doors haven't started to close yet. He's running toward the right door. And so this is how we would explain it. You have to be careful here. Uh, the key thing is these doors don't close at the same time in the runner's frame of reference, but they do in the barn's frame of reference. Nobody is right, nobody is wrong. Both can be explained equally. But we might want to look for a little bit more explanation. And the runner is approaching the right door, and so the signal that the right door is closing is going to reach him before the signal that the left door is closing. And so he sees the right door close, then the left door. Oh, you're tardy. So uh, if we go back and look at it again from the runner's point of view, this is the same thing we just saw. Uh, the pole never has to fit in the barn with both doors closed. The right door closes, then opens again, and the runner enters the barn and the left door doesn't start to close until the runner's in the barn and doesn't close until the left end of the pole is in the barn. And so that resolves the paradox. The doors were never closed at, uh, um, together, and so the pole didn't have to fit in the barn. Well, the people that came up with this paradox, that didn't stop them. They said, okay, let's imagine that we keep the right door closed. And so if we keep it closed and it's very strong compared to the pole, then the pole would hit it, right? And so how might that change things? Um, and so the pole would stop and then this door would close on it and it would be sticking out again. So let's watch the animation again from the runner's frame of reference with one change. We're going to release a pulse of light when the pole hits the very strong right door and can you explain why keeping the right door closed does not create a new paradox and so the runner sees the barn coming at him the right door is closing like we saw before but then the pole hits and BAM it stops or does it that pulse of light nothing travels faster than light including the information that the pole has hit this door so the runner doesn't know until the light hits him, or actually that's the earliest. And then now, the left end of the pole is in the barn. It keeps moving at 87% the speed of light until it's found out that the right end hit the door and stopped. And so the pole is just disintegrating on the right door, and the rest of it just keeps moving until the runner is well inside the barn. And so the pole is inside the barn before the left end knows the pole has hit the right door. Nothing can travel faster than light, not even the information the right end of the pole has stopped. And actually that information is going at more at the speed of sound. And so the runner is not going to know the pole hit the door until he splats on it pretty much uh, himself. And so the paradox is resolved. Uh, one thing, thing that might help you think about this, the pole is mostly empty space. And so it's not a really a continuous solid object as you, that's just an illusion. And so when this end hits, it doesn't mean this end instantly knows the fastest that information could travel is the speed of light. In reality, it's going to travel slower than that. So does that make your brain hurt?